looked happy enough in that video mm -hmm. and I'm looking for the day that we're going to be looking that happy at the local government level, which is something that we've always talked about and stressed on Sunrise. We're looking this morning at devolution of power. Well, everyone who talks about this says that that is the best way to go. Mm. Devolve power. The center is too powerful. The center is too strong. Give the states more power and especially give the local governments more power. Well, the law has given them more power, but in practice. And I think altogether, perhaps even now um, that the constitutional review process is ongoing, 12 states have deliberated on the local government autonomy, financial and administrative autonomy bills. Mm -hmm. 10 of them have passed. Lagos has said no. Ikiti has said no. <laughs> For now. <laughs> That's news. So, I mean, that's like an update. So, thank um, you for that update. And I think we need about 24 states to say yes. yes. So, our journey has just started. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, we have with us a legal practitioner, Mr. Chima Naji. Remember him? The man with the proverbs. Well, he's here with us this morning. Good morning, Mr. Naji. Good to see you again. Good morning, my pleasure, Alero. And on my left, I have Hi. Mr. Noro Edokwolo, a social commentator. Good morning. Morning. Always a pleasure. As well as Golahan Olojedi. Good morning. Good morning. Nice well, to be here. Both social commentators. Now, let me start with the lawyer, sir. We've been talking about devolving power, devolution of power, devolution of power. Um, how easy or how difficult would it be legally to actually achieve that? Nothing is so easy or too difficult under the sun. Thinking fueled by motive makes it either difficult, impossible, or easy. So when you hear somebody is determined to do something, there is a motivation to achieve that result. It becomes easy because you must find that one single reason out of 99 why those things will fail. You look for one reason why it should succeed. And that's why organizations make progress. In the situation of Nigeria, devolution of powers or power, as the case may be, is a highly emotive thing. Very, very emotive at the so-called leadership level. Because it involves a lot of contrivances, some of which are mirrored in ethnicity, religious bigotry, social stratifications, and all manner of bifurcations. And these things make the thing complex and almost impossible, or look impossible. But it's a simple thing. In your family, devolution of powers, the man had always been said to be the man, uh, the person that should fetch for the family. The situation is changing. In fact, it has changed willy-nilly, willy-nilly. But the man who goes out to fetch knows that he does not have all the time to go to the kitchen or does not have the culinary prowess to come out with the best dishes. So he concedes that to the wife. It, it will look odd for the man to go to the market to start pricing tomato and all the soup condiments. Even if he's doing it for love, it will be misperceived as he's a stingy man who wants to monitor the woman of the house trying to uh, cut corners, so to speak, that he wants to monitor her that she's cutting corners and so on, even if he's doing it out of love. So devolution of powers has always been a very simple thing, ordinarily, if it yeah. is you know, uh, well, thought you through. Know, let me just quickly, because I think there is a need for some kind of historical perspective to yes. where we are, which 
tapers with what you, um, the analogy you gave of the man yes. and the woman going to, I'm not sure that some men will agree with you, Mr. Edopolo, for here. For they have the right to disagree. Yes, because <laughs> he, may, he may be the better cook in the house, mm. <laughs> and the wife would, you know, agree. With he, the, the point he might have the capacity to do that, but mm. it does not run through. Then that is what he will be doing. No, no, I understand what I think. What you said, you know, it changed willingly because, yes. and it is something that happened mutually. Exactly. Understood Absolutely. well by the two parties. No, no acrimony over Absolutely. it, whatever. So, historically, we didn't always have problems with the local government system. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember the. I didn't know the. I grew up in the seventies. I didn't know the governor of Lagos State at the time. But I knew the environmental officers that came around. I knew in Lagos we called them Willy Willy. I talk about it all the time. I, I, I knew those ones in particular because it, we didn't have the only fridge we had then was pot, clay pot. <laughs> they would come, look in your clay pot if they saw tadpoles, that pot was gone. So they did their bit to protect the people. Mm. They were from the local government system. Yes. So the local government was that effective at the time. They had powers. The officers had powers to do everything they needed to do. In agriculture, extension service officers had their work cut out for them. No, they, didn't, they didn't need the authority or order of the governor mm. or body language of, federal government. Or of the federal government to do what they were supposed to do. So at what point did we topple? that system, such that we now have to be talking about something that was not a problem before. That is why I use the word decidedly, contrivance. Because up until 1977 or thereabout, the local government system that you just described was working. It was the responsibility of states, as it were, to manage local governments, as administrative units. If you like, create 100 local governments depending on your capacity to manage the entire gamut. Some local governments in those days, so-called, they had the community um, uh, associations and so that were socially organized in such an efficient manner that if anything was decided at the state level, it got down to the family level that same evening. And people were bound to do it because they, they had, like you said, you related to human beings. Mm. Many people don't know who, is their local, who their local government chairman are mm -hmm. today. They never saw them, we we'll never see them anywhere. Mm. So at that time, when the military decided and you remember I used the word emotive. I used the word contrivance. Mm. All these are words that are charged psychologically. And you can interject, you can interject heinous intentions. And that is what we have. So that you create imbalance in an attempt to create discomfiture for some people you also ultimately hurt yourself. So what we find today is that local governments were created to give some manner of hegemony to certain people. You find that Lagos State had problem with, uh, uh, under Tinubu, had problem with uh, Basinger's uh, federal government because it was absolutely unjustifiable for Lagos State with the population it had to to be made to suffer such organic disadvantage when you place it with Kanu that did not have as much burden to bear. Now, what did Tinubu do? He decided to take the mantra. And of course, the federal government descended mightily on him. The rest is history. But we still find that that hedge money is growing. And it has to do with revenue. You cannot be taking from the pot more than what you decide, what you have ever been putting in that pot. Mm. It is called inequity, injustice. That's why I said maybe as we evolve in the discussion, mm. because I, I, I have to be mindful that I am not alone. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lajede, more and more the, the call for devolution of power seems to be getting louder. Correct. especially in the area of security. 
it's not just about funds now. Um, the police is federal, the army is federal, everything is federal. So a problem, a security problem arises in some local government in Lagos, for instance, you have to wait for action to be taken from Abuja. Um, in your view, are these calls, do these calls have merit? And is, have we got to the point now where we have to consider this seriously and begin to take action? Th th thank you for this question. Um, and, and I will start with an example. Some years ago, the contract for securing pipelines was taken away from a gentleman called Tompolo. Um, some things were not going right. It was in the media yesterday that apparently that same contract has been returned to him. What could have played out in that nexus? It is what you're talking about. Crime is local. So the people, in fact, I, I used to have a colleague back in my banking days. Emeka grew up on Lagos Island. Emeka will call, even, even those guys with, you know, that are already drug affected, he knows their name, he knows their father. And he will call them. And this guy was a banker. But that was where he grew up. If you go into Lagos Island with Emeka, he will be asking for their dad, how is daddy? How is this? This is to tell us that crime is local. Knowing the people is local, if a stranger comes to my environment, the chances that that man from Abuja will know him uh, more than I do is, 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 is slim. Is slim. He's not slim. He's almost absent. Almost absent. <laughs> so <laughs> we slim, move for, for <laughs> slim. <laughs> slim, you can still see slim. Mm. We are also beginning to see things like regional security structure emerging. Mm -hmm. You are the Ebubiago, the uh, Amoteku. Mm. Uh, before those ones even came, which were regional, we have had certain state level ones, mm. especially in the Northeast and in the Northwest, where people were saying, look, we as the locals must participate in the security of our environment because we know our environment more than anybody. So it's a genuine concern. And I think the, the, the cry for restructuring based on insecurity, I think insecurity and revenue are actually the biggest factors that are driving it right now. It's a step in the right direction, just that we cannot do it in the haphazard manner in which everybody is declaring this and declaring that. Mm. It has to be a structured approach. In a haphazard manner is very dangerous. I, I take you also back to the question that I asked him. At what point did we begin to, it was never a prob it wasn't a problem ab initio. Let me use a, a scriptural reference. In the beginning, it was not so. <laughs> so at what point did we topple and or toggle it such that we, it has now become a, a problem? Okay, I, I think the, the, the root of the, of, the, of the problem had to do with taking the country as a whole unitary. Uh, the 1966 event, the military came to power. The way the military structure runs is different, totally different from it's a democratic environment. Uh, forgive me, sir. Yeah. Uh, while I hear you, yeah. and I have had this discussion, so many people have said that, but I'm not going to ask you the follow-up question to your, to, to the, I'm going to ask him. It's been 56 years since that process started, the process of, uh, what we, you know, uh, what did we call it now? Unitary. Unitary uh, system of government. And it's been 23 years, right, mm -hmm. into this... Uh, republic. You know, republic, the fourth republic. We've had the second republic since that time, lasted about three, uh, three and a half years or thereabout. We've had the third republic, even though it was botched within about a year or so, so it would seem like we were, we're not even thinking about restoring things to the old glory. This is the, the longest of it that we've had. It's been more than 20 years. Yeah, so I mean, so what has happened is that those who are at the helm of affairs are enjoying it the way it is, so they've maintained it. All right? So the military left, those who took over, even though they were not soldiers, they liked the way it was. It was, it was working for them. And so they've continued. 
And, and that is why, for me, Nigerians must recognize that if we do not take back our country, these guys will run us to the ground. So that's my answer. But then it doesn't solve the problem of devolution of powers. Devolution of powers will come when a new set of people take over the, the realm of, of rulership who are not, you know, it's like it was started by this group of people. They handed over to this group, and this group are enjoying it, so they've maintained it. If you check, it's the same set of people who've been passing the button around themselves, all right? So they have, is, Nigeria has been a cosmetic country. We've been military ever since, all right? <laughs> the uniforms were changed to Agbada, but the mentality has remained military. Why? Because it works for a few people up there, all right? And so they would continue because it, it favors them, it's in their interest. Haven't you noticed that when it's corruption, we're of the same religion, the same tribe? Haven't you noticed? You know, when it's time to, you know, cream Nigeria, we forget our differences, we are one. So the, the way forward to deal with this is to get a new set of people in who have not, you know, put their hands in the cookie jar prior to. Otherwise, come don't, next year. Don't forget that the cookie jar is very, very beautiful. It's a precious bride. And that's why... But it's, it's not, lean now. It's lean now. Lean. And even the little that is left there. The guys are not willing to let go. You know what? I, if I'm going to play on that lean analogy, yeah. I'm going to try to go the way of uh, uh, Chief Naji this morning. All you need to do is fertilize that tree. And then it will produce more and it will get fatter again. But let me come to him. Let's just hold <laughs> let me come to him. Um, we, there is a, you said the process of devolving powers is easy. Depending on how, mm. but legally, what are the legal structures? Do we need extra legal structures to achieve this ease, or what we have already is sufficient? There are legal impediments, yeah. serious one, constitutional, to devolution of powers, and they were contrived. I use that word again <laughs> because. The, the, the people who were in power or in authority foresaw a situation where what they did could be undone. So they put those minds. You have to achieve like to third percent, uh, to third of uh, the other states mm -hmm. or local governments as presently constituted. And you know it is almost practically impossible Possible. because these things are not based on reason. Mm. Even we, we were witnesses to the fact that some local governments, even some legislature, say they don't want autonomy, they want to be slave to the governor. <laughs> is it not in this country that we saw that? You would imagine that everybody who is in bondage, who realizes is in bondage, would want to keep that bond, mm. drop that chain, and shout hallelujah. But they depicted one thing which summarizes what I am saying now. A little child of three years was holding a, a, a horse on a string, and the horse was happy to follow the child instead of just doing like, oh, and then run away. Because it had been habituated mm. and psychologically comfortable. Mm. That is what is happening to Nigerians, which is why till tomorrow you will see mm. people contesting, why should you want to change the people that are hurting us? Because hurt has become psychologically yeah. Normalized. acceptable. Yes. Normalized, yes. Now, yeah. to go straight to the question, because I, just, I feel that I just made a general statement. The constitutional impediment is that there are things that must be done by the legislature. It's not you and I talking on TV, and then we walk away with the opinion survey that everybody wants it. The handful of people we sent to Abuja. Who sent themselves to Abuja? We, well, we, let's, <laughs> let's, let, we, have, we, have, we have acquiesced. <laughs> we have acquiesced. If an armed robber took your wrist watch or asked you, uh, uh, this watch is fine, no? He brings out his gun. 
you, you may even ask him, you like it. <laughs> Take it. Take it. He said, thank you, you're a very nice man. <laughs> but I like this shoe to go with it. Too. He said, if it is what you want, now. Take, Take it. it. <laughs> it's only when he has gone one kilometer, we say, hello. <laughs> you see? So it will, if he had a camera, it would look as if you were giving him a gift. And somebody might even say, you're a very kind man. You mm -hmm. had to walk barefooted mm -hmm. after giving. So that is Nigerian situation. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, the law is so complex mm -hmm. that you can't even create local government, mm -hmm. additional mm -hmm. local government. That's mm -hmm. why some of us who are seeing beyond the shenanigans mm -hmm. have been consistent in saying that the local government, we don't need it to be captured in the Constitution. Yes. It's not supposed to be one of the federating units. Yes. The federation, you know, is between the states and the central government. If you want to create one million local governments, Go ahead. it is entirely your business. Yeah. The, if, if you have a fissiparous attitude, the more you create, the more you alienate yourself from governance, the more the people want to boot you out. But, how do but you what we have today is a highly depersonalized process. You don't know the local government chairman. In fact, people kill to become the chairman. Mm -hmm. Some governors never allow the election to take place for the fear that they will lose access to the till mm -hmm. that comes straight from the If we go by this example that you're giving, uh, that you know the states should take control of their local governments and be able to do what they would like with it. But even now, Going by what uh, Mr. Lodgeri said the last time, um, that all crime is local, mm -hmm. all insecurity is local, the local governments are the way they are now, they share the same um, pot of soup, as it were, the same you know, accounts with the, the local governments, the, with the states, yet the states do not fund them the way they ought. So what's the assurance that they're going to do what they should do if it's left entirely to their women caprice in the states? If you legislate that this should happen to Mr. B. The person will present a facade of following that law because he has now been deprived of his own initiative. He can carry the money, okay, and give the impression that the local governments have not been working. He will sack the chairman that he, he put there mm. and there will be turnover of people there. But if it is something that must come from him, he will be held responsible. That governance at the local levels are not work. It's not working. I don't know whether you, because this money from what we have today come from Abuja. Mm -hmm. And they bring it to the state level for them to share. And somebody has to sit on this and say, because you ask for your own share, is it your mother's money? Remove him. And the man is removed. If you even want to go to court, you will remain in court forever. Oh dear. Yeah. You will remain in court forever. Do you agree with him, uh, Mr. Lojedi? Significantly so. It's a fairly complex place. Um, Nigeria, the Nigeria we have today from a revenue perspective, it's like having a six-cylinder engine for which only one of the cylinders is working. It's not working. Mm. So you see 36 states commissioners of finance, every month they go to Abuja Share. with their cap in hand Share. to mm -hmm. go get money. Money that they did not work for. Mm -hmm. But money that a few states have put together significantly so and put at that center. It's a disincentive in itself to having a robust economy. Yes. Because mm -hmm. I know that once I have 10% of the money I'm going to spend, I'm fine. I can mm -hmm. go to Abuja and get the remaining 90%. Mm -hmm. So, Apart from insecurity, economy remains a critical reason why we must think in the direction of devolving power and getting all these turbines to turn rather than a few turbines turning and then the rest are hanging on to what comes mm. from those places. But, 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 but Norwa, this pot at the center is getting leaner and leaner. I mean, for obvious reasons. So... Those who are the ones generating the funds that go to the center, 
So how long do you think they're going to be happy with this arrangement? Especially seems it's, since it seems that their powers are dwindling. They are doing all the work and bringing all the money that is being shared, and yet they have no say in how it is shared and what comes to them. Thank you very much. It actually helps me to... Um, I, I think that, you know, for me, I'm looking forward. And this question helps us to go forward. I think that Nigeria, the constituent parts of Nigeria, should stop waiting for Abuja to bring about change. They must begin to initiate change from wherever they are. I'll give you an example. River State versus Federal Government, VAT. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Tinumbu's uh, uh, LCDs, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. If we are going to wait, if you think that at some point, people will sit down in Abuja and do the right thing. I'm sorry. So we must begin to demand for the right thing. Go to the courts. Test the Constitution. All right? And so this is really where this conversation should be going. Governments, CSOs, citizens should sit down and say, what else can we chip away from these guys? What else can we cut off from these people? Let's go to court. Let's challenge this. Because... Abuja is not about to let go. So if you think that at some point the people in Abuja will sit down and do the right thing. You know, I was in my 20s when Shuyinka said his was a wasted generation. And I said, oh, God forbid. I'm in my 50s now. And I'm almost saying the same thing. You haven't yet. <laughs> I'm almost saying the same thing. So my, my, my point is we need to begin to chip at the Nigerian constitution from different corners and different angles. Okay. Otherwise... <laughs> Let me ask you on, on, on the back of that yeah. you know, issue that you just raised. We're talking about devolution of powers. Yes. To the federating units. Yes. Let me make this a little more... Should I use the word complex or dynamic? Uh -huh. How about devolving powers cross-generationally? Again, mm -hmm. it, it goes back to, and, and again, thank you very much. You're just, you know, you're taking me to where I want to go. Um, I'm in my 50s. I'm happy I'm not taking you away from Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even praying to be another 50 in Nigeria, another 50 years on earth. So the guys who are in their 30s and 20s who have the power must make sure that next year they vote not on uh, tribe, not on religion, religion. not on any of those things, but on competency and on track records. Otherwise, they will be lamenting in their 50s if there is still in Nigeria. I'll stick with you and still raise this issue. Yes. There's something that I've argued in my head over time mm. about this aspect of this conversation. Um, in the 60s, in the 50s into the 60s, mm -hmm. the young men and women who fought for Nigeria's independence, as I said, they were young their 20s largely mm -hmm. 58 59 or thereabout or maybe 56 i don't know when i don't remember when asked that we want nigeria to be independent and they got it what did they have in my opinion they had education maybe their parents didn't have education at least western education the way they had it at the time so they could speak intelligibly with the colonial masters who listened to them eventually under 10 years and got Nigeria to be independent. Today, the young people, what would you say is their competitive advantage over their parents, which they have and use? I, I think that, thankfully, I think our young people are suddenly coming to a realization that they have what it takes to bring about change, all right? NSAS was a watershed moment in many dimensions, all right? And so I think that um, um, we have educated young people, but for a long time, they didn't give a damn, all right? That's what happened. They just carried on with their lives. You know, I mean, with my laptop, I can make money, all right? I can work for anybody abroad. But now you can't do that. You, you can't work for anybody abroad. You can't get your money. So they are beginning to realize that Whatever is happening in Abuja has a direct impact on their pockets. So I think they are, they are coming to realization. And all I can say is that they have for, it's almost like a once in a lifetime opportunity to bring about the Nigeria of their dreams. Whereas 
the people you spoke to had to go to London to mm. go and bring about change. This time around, they just need to take a stroll to their polling centers and do the right thing. The, the, the issue I'm raising is that of their competitive advantage. On the olden days, they had education. Today, uh, Mr. Lodge, they would say that maybe the young people have technology. technology? And they have numbers. And Huge they have numbers. numbers. Yeah. Okay. Huge. Now, I have also seen, uh, well, I could be wrong, and I hope I am, but what I have perceived is that most young people don't, they're not interested in the things that can institutionally bring about the change. News, government, all those things, generally will seem like they're apathetic towards them. Stranger. They were apathetic. Were. Stranger. They are waking up. Mm -hmm. When you look at the recent uh, INEC uh, new registration, you see the chunk of the people that participated there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And today, the political engagement we're seeing online, mm -hmm. a lot of young people are involved. Mm -hmm. So um, while they might be apathetic in the past, I think that is changing. Up. And I'll be happy. The question that I want you to speak to is, and uh, Mr. Uh, you know, um, Dr. Law spoke about them, you know, making the right changes, right selection, and all of that. But in terms of mentoring these people to do the right thing, how should we be going about it? Mm. Because it's, he, uh, uh, Mr. Naji spoke about emotive action as opposed to factual and realistic action. Do you understand? Um, generally, people just fly with the next information available, not necessarily exploring and exploiting them to ensure that we get, okay, these are the information that are, that are out there, these are the real facts, and this is, the, this is the decision we need to go about it. Who and how should we be mentoring young people to ensure that they do not vote on sentiments or emotiveness or just the mood of the moment, but on sustainable decision? The media has a huge role in that. There is, there is no doubt. Because, see, for young people, they are even more emotive than, they, than the older people. Yes. And they could easily be led in the wrong way. Absolutely. So it is the duty of the media, I would say, Civil, civil, civil uh, uh, organizations, mm -hmm. and as, as, as well as the INEC in itself. INEC has a role in what you call voters' education. Mm -hmm. You know, so guiding these people to move discussions away from emotional issues to the substance, uh, what I call critical matters of state. As it is today, if you ask me, for most of the candidates, I don't even know where they stand on the critical matters of state. What has dominated the scene and not the subject well, matter that we should be discussing no, thus Mr. far? Mr. Lodjade, yes. uh, remem remember that campaigns have not really taken off. They're not taking off yeah. until next month. So let's just hope <laughs> that we'll get to hear about all these things mm -hmm. you're talking about right. when they take off mm -hmm. next month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. So Hopefully. Cut, cut them some slack for now. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me just uh, uh, add to uh, the response to that question the difference or the advantage the current youths have over their parents or vice versa. Yeah. The educational system of those days is not the same thing as we have today. <sighs> Even though today it is more technologically driven, the content of technology is higher, which has even imposed some degree of mental laziness. Mm. Because in those days, if I ask you 44 times 3, you will get a sheet of paper and begin to bet none. Ping, pong, pong, pong. <laughs> it's equal to, and you move on. In fact, you can be moving on while you are pressing the thing. Now, philosophy was taught. Yeah. Every human being must have philosophy of life. The old academics, if you may not, the philosophers, thinkers, they had a vision on certain subject matters. So when we hear people like Plato, Aristotle, and so on and so forth, they had visions about how society could be organized. The political philosophy of this person, philosophy on religion, this and that, you have some ideas, okay, which will be ingrained in you to form the person. What has happened to Nigeria is that the, the generality of most of the leaders Outside Zeke, Awo, and perhaps uh, Amadou Bello and all that, who had their own little uh, vision and those who had their own higher vision and so on, but they had visions. 
outside those ones, it is bread and butter. Yeah. How to take advantage of the yeah. other. Stomach infrastructure. Supremacy, mm. something. And when you even see that in terms of content, Absence of you have nothing. Yeah. Yet you want to affect the context. It is the content that affects the context, not the other way. Never. If you don't have anything in you, you can't change your environment. You will be dancing. That's why paper, if you put it now, it will be wafting. Because it has no mind of its own. Hmm. The breeze goes west, it follows it. And that's how Nigeria has been going this yo-yo. We have never made any progress. If we, like ne ne electricity, you may have one week supply, and you say, ah, thank God, the next two months, <laughs> you don't see any bulb unless you have a, a generating cell. So that is not how to grow society. The educational system has become even more bastardized because there are no longer, some people will say if you teach religion. Let me tell you, some people are Christians, but they are authorities in Islamic religion and vice versa. Yes. So when the people like Abiola will be telling you I, I was a Baptist, some young ones today who have been so badly indoctrinated will be surprised. Does it mean that Abiola, if not that he was a figure that was very well known, his religion was known, but he lived beyond his religion. Mm -hmm. But most of today's leaders are caught in the cleavages of those primordial uh, uh, stupidities, if okay. I should use them. Which unfortunately use that word. And it's affecting everybody that claim to be their followers. So gullible, we, as okay, we, let, let's round off quickly now. Um, yes. How do we transit? Because there are pockets of people who are talking about this. Uh, the governor, Shei Makinde, is talking about it. Uh, former governor, uh, Bisi Akonde, is talking about it. Ulisa Bakuba, former, uh, yeah, well, NBA human right, uh, former NBA president, is talking about this devolution of power. It's essentially talking about political power. Yes. So That's the only way to affect change. And it's very st strong, soft infrastructure in this entire spectrum. If we are to make sustainable progress, let me not say quick progress, sustainable <laughs> progress about, around this conversation. What do we need to do? What steps do we need to take that can be sustainable? If I should um, quote Chinua Achebe, the problem with Nigeria is leadership. If they say that the food is not sweet, hold the cook. Responsible. If he cooks very well, the entire place will be rent with very beautiful aroma of food that will stimulate your buccal cavity. The point we're making is that if you change the leadership of this country, changing is not in terms of human person. Mm. This leadership style is very, very important. That's what makes one organization fail mm -hmm. in the same market mm -hmm. while the other one is prospering. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the thing we need is change in leadership, leadership style. Those mm. who have knowledge, mm. who have passion, who have patriotism, who want to deliver, who are not caught with the cleavages of religion, ethnicity, mm -hmm. and all those primordial idiosyncrasies, mm. they should come on board. And I can tell you within six months, this country will be let loose from the bondage of those who, wants to who want to bastardize it. My question to you in is closing. Off in closing. Different. Okay. Mm -hmm. in dif it's different. Mm -hmm. He talked about leadership, not leader. Mm -hmm. Part of this system is the engine that runs leadership, and that's the civil service. Mm -hmm. Do you see a problem? Oh, huge. In fact, <laughs> the civil service is the engine room of corruption in Nigeria. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, for me... What do we do to make that better? <clears throat> whoever takes over as our leader should go and teach value orientation. Everything will From change. ground zero at yes. the civil service. Okay. You know what you taught us civic, civic studies when we in primary mm -hmm. school? I pledge to Nigeria, my country. Let's go back. Mm. We need to teach. So, in other words, for you to remain in the civil service, you must go through value 101, 102... 103, okay. 104. Okay. If we can get the civil service to be one tenth of the ones where corruption would drop drastically. So, Lord Jerry, mm. my, my qu closing question to you is also different. How do we avoid a protest of the animal kingdom? <laughs> where termites, animals, snakes rats and, and monkeys. Snakes and those are, 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 you have to disgorge those two things. <laughs> it is, you have to find them first, Mr. Nagy. It is, it, is, it is leadership. It goes back to leadership. Yes. And my favorite example in this country is, was uh, Dora Akoyili. 
there were people who never knew that that organization existed, existed yeah. yes. before Dora. When it came to that Sadhu, when she came there, it wasn't as if she brought some special people to come and populate this no. place. It was the same people. So what changed? The passion, the knowledge. The passion, the knowledge, the leadership. Yes. And that is what we need at every level. It's not just at Abuja, every level of our, of our politics. Mm. Well, that's a good place to um, leave it. So I can safely assume that the general consensus here is that power should be devolved, True. if possible. Like yesterday. True. <clears throat> it should, should be devolved. Like yesterday. <laughs> like yesterday. No, if, if possible, because he no, said that there are like some obstacles. Not. Whether you like it or not. The, the, yeah. the, 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 we, we are need, primed need for that. Yeah. Nigerians are tired, sick and tired. They must make a change because the bond and the bondage is for our own eternal ruination. Therefore, we must release ourselves. Thank you very much. Through the ballot process. OK. The painless killer. Legal <laughs> practitioner, Mr. Chima Naji, Mr. Parables. <laughs> and we also had two social commentators, Mr. Norua Edopolo and Mr. Bolahan Olojedi. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for having us with us this morning. So otherwise, we'll be back in just a moment. Do stay with us.